our workers in place. We are truly excited and honored to have each and every person here with us today as we get ready to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and make it through another week, pushing with goals and expectations to go into the next week. We're gonna have a good time. Come on in this house. We're gonna have a good time. Come on in this house. We're gonna have a good time. Come on in this house. Come on.
and dying for us. So we're so glad that he came, and I hope that you're ready to lift his name up because he's truly worthy. Like I said, what he's done for us, no one else could have done it. We couldn't have done it for ourselves. You know, it took God to do it. And like I said, he, being God, didn't think it was something belittling to come and choose and die for us. And then some of us still reject him. Like I said, there's still people that's walking the face of the earth that still don't want a redeemer, don't want a king. You know, they think that it's taxing and demeaning and, and if they only knew. Like I said, if you meet with the Lord and he meets your needs and speaks to you and does all those things, you realize, like I said, the God of the universe talks to you and walks with you. And he tells you that you are his own. And like I said, man, that's something to be excited about. You know, I am truly getting the understanding that, like I said, even though I would, I'll, I'll probably never do the two-step or the, the shout it out, I just don't think I'm coordinated enough for it, that he's done enough to where I could, you know. But the wonderful thing is, is that we really do want to lift his name up. And like I said, so many times the world and our TVs and our radios have been blaring to get our attention on other things. Yeah. You know, but we want to make sure that we keep our attention on who deserves it. Because when you're in need, guess who's going to be there? He. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high.
seen by your peers as being this awesome person, fitting in with the world. Like I said, the thing is, is that the world's not going to accept us because we're not of them. Like I said, even if we want to trick ourselves and want to fit in with them, believe me, you're still marked. They still know who you are, even if you don't want to accept it. And sometimes it's a battle within you. But like I said, this battle and this place that we have in the Lord is truly a place of honor. It's a place that allows you to see past what others can give you. Like I said, to be a giver, because that's what we are trying to say, is giving people something that they don't necessarily deserve or haven't earned, is exactly what we've experienced with Christ. So we're able to give them forgiveness, we're able to give them love, even though they don't know how to ask for it, even if, they, even if you think they don't deserve it. But the wonderful thing is, is that none of us do. And so when we have it and we can share it, then it shows them that there really is a lot more to this world than just riches and fame and, you know, things those, uh, that are uh, along those lines. Because like I said, all of this one day is going to pass away. All of this is going to be over and done. And only what we do for Christ will last. And so the thing is, is that we want to make sure that we're able to magnify the Lord with what we do. And like I said, we magnify him because he loved us even when we were in our frailty. Even when we were in our sin, he loved us anyway. So I hope that, like I said, you can find a reason to magnify the Lord. Because he's truly worthy of it. And when you learn to magnify him, you get to see things through a different lens. You know, it's not, woe is me, and so-and-so did this to me, and, and all of that. Um, I'm still working... Like I said, like you guys know, I, I, I supervise teachers. And of course, they have confrontations too. They have confrontations with parents. They have confrontations with kids. They have confrontations with admin. They have confrontations with parents. But they make each other. Yes. <laughs> and the one thing that we've I've always said to them, you, no matter what anyone else does, you need to find a way to remain to be you. Amen. Because that's what the devil's trying to do. The devil's trying to stop you from being the authentic you that God wants for you to be. And he's going to use any means necessary to do it. But you just have to believe that you're valuable and that you're worth being who God made you. Because you are. And so as many times as I can tell you that on a Sunday morning, a Thursday night, I'm going to keep telling you. Because you are beautiful. You are wonderfully made. God made no mistakes. Like I said, we're not perfect, so there's some glitches. But like we said, he can always reprogram us, right? Those of you that are those program, those IT people, you know, we know that there's glitches you find in the system and they do those updates. So keep walking with the Lord and let them update you as necessary, amen? <laughs> but I hope that you're going to be able to magnify the Lord with us. Magnify.
that remain a part of you, that remains in the shadows, that makes you think that you're not worthy, that makes you question your value. Um, but like we said, the one thing that the Bible teaches us is that it's those things that we need to bring out so that we don't continue to be fed a lot. We don't allow ourselves to be lied to. Because the thing is, is that God's love for us is very real. It's genuine. It can stand the test of time. It can stand the test of disloyalty. It can stand the time of rejection. He's just that good. Now, when you find it in a human, it's rare. It's very rare. And there were things, like I said, that happened before salvation, shortly after salvation, as we were trying to figure this thing out. After walking in the world for as long for, for 13 years. <laughs> um, but like I said, 13 years, a lot can happen. Yeah. A lot can happen to you in 13 years. And sometimes we play that down. Say, oh, you're only 13 years old. What could you have been, what could you have had to deal with? But the thing is, 13 years with others making choices and decisions that's not to your benefit can definitely make a difference. But the Lord has this wonderful way of once he takes us out of the situation, sometimes we bring those life choices and life values into our Christian world, and we don't even realize they're still making decisions for us. And so the Lord in his love and in his care brings us slowly along to allow us to deal with those things, to face those things, to even realize that they even happen, because sometimes your mind shuts it down and won't allow you to realize it happened because it's trying to preserve you. But there were some things when Pastor and I first got together, like I said, that I just, I didn't really know what love was supposed to look like. So I had a little mix of what God says love looked like, a little mix of what the world told me it was, and then my own concept of it. And so in that time, when we first got saved, and if I, um, like I said, I wasn't always sure I wanted pastor. As many of you know, he said he wanted me, and he was pretty stuck on that, you know. But I wasn't quite sure if he was the one, you know. He was the one that was going to make it all happen, you know. Um, so I had to test the waters a little bit. I went out to kind of see if there was other options, better choices. And during my time out there, they weren't the best choices to make. But I would come back and I would let Pastor know, you know, what transpired in the, in the course of that time. And I'm not telling you that that's what everybody should do. Because like I said, not everybody's able to handle details. But we try to ask for details. But you need to be honest with yourself that if you can't handle details, don't ask for details. Because if you're struggling with the situation itself, you're probably going to struggle a little bit more with the details. So let's not ask for but the thing is, it doesn't, what I thought, though, was because I couldn't tell him, I couldn't tell anybody. That's not necessarily true. Because that made me struggle with the things and the concept of myself by myself. And sometimes you need a little help. Sometimes you need somebody to hear, and sometimes you need to know that it's forgiven. That it's something that's in the past, is something that you've outgrown. But Pastor used to ask him for those details, and... Thankfully, thank the Lord that I couldn't remember them because after I did them, I said, God, please don't be for me. <laughs> because I wasn't ready to be that honest. I wasn't ready to be that honest of a person, especially not with him, because he loved me for what he knew. But I was always in the back of my head when he still loved me for the things he doesn't know. for the different things this, um, two weekends ago. And he asked me a question. And this time I remembered. <laughs> so in remembering it, I said, all right, are, you, are, we, are we sure we're mature enough to have this conversation? And he said it was. And, and I was okay enough in myself to share the situation. And it really was something because he got to tell me something because you guys always heard when he said that if I ever had a boyfriend, I would bring that boyfriend to church and let that boyfriend sit with him. Like I said, I was malicious. I was downright cruel. Um, and like I said, but didn't catch it. Didn't. It was just like, hey, <laughs> you know, he, they could have both said no. If they choose to sit together, because I said y'all should sit together, well, you kind of know if you should or shouldn't. 
swimming. But Pastor was one of those ones that was just, I'll go with it. We'll, we'll, we'll make this work. Because like I said, he figured we were going to be together anyway. So take the dirt. But don't do this, you guys. I'm not promoting that. Please don't do that.
morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I was looking at my Bible, and um, I, I see this passage in Psalm 117, and I really like this. Okay, the theme is uh, another reason for praise. God's love for the whole world. We should praise God for his unlimited love. Yes. And 117 reads as follows. Well, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise you, the Lord. Father God, Jesus' name, I thank you for bringing us all here this morning. I thank you for waking us all up this morning. You said if two more are gathered in your name, you will be in the midst of us. So we know you're here, Lord, and we appreciate you, and we love you. We should praise you for everything. Not only the people here, but all your family and all your loved ones. I praise the Lord for everyone. Thank you for blessing the service to come. Lord, in Jesus' name, help us to hear with our ears and take in with our heart and our minds the word the pastor is about to uh, give through you. And we thank you so much for everything and all of our loved ones. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. 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 